This is A game, fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am your host, femininity coach and author, The Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about um, Black women and this for the street stuff. Right now, I want everybody to put in the chat room what comes to my excuse me, what comes to mind when we think of the term they for the streets or she for the streets. Just write whatever comes to mind because what we really need to understand is what that actually is saying. They for the streets. I think the first thing that we need to understand is that it's saying, this is just another way of saying, this is a woman or sometimes a man that is a worshiper of the lost value system, is a person that is extremely immersed in the lost value system where wealth means everything, le leisure means everything, things, internal values don't mean much at all unless money can be made some type of way. But this person is just really out for the all the externals and they don't pay any attention to who they are internally. Now, sometimes uh, this can be applied to men as well. He for the streets. But since we, I talk to women, we're going to talk to black women about being for the streets and what that really means. Because some of the first things that come to mind when I think of a woman that's for the streets is promiscuous, of course, but then also a woman that doesn't have a lot of morals, that's giving up her body all the time. She doesn't really have anything spiritually inside of her that counteracts any of that. You know, she doesn't really live according to a code that keeps her away from certain things. Uh, she's really immersed in the material life. But more importantly, it speaks to a woman that doesn't belong anywhere. She doesn't belong to anybody. Nobody claims her. Nobody wants her. Nobody covers her. Nobody protects her. Nobody solves her problems. Nobody sees anything within her or deeper inside of her other than the shell that they want to see, other than the shell that she presents to people. And when she's for the streets, nobody is giving her more of a consideration than, you know, what what they might be able to get out of her or what they think they can get out of her or what she tells them that she can give them things of that nature. And she'll do whatever it takes to belong somewhere with somebody, even if she knows it's temporary. So like when you hear a guy tell his friend, oh yeah, she's for the streets. What comes, what comes, the visual that comes to mind for me is like, imagine just this general bargain being full of women. And it's like, come, come get what you want. Like first come first serve type situation. When you're done, just throw it back. You know what I'm saying? And then the next person that need it or wants it can come over to the bin and get it and do whatever. And then just throw it back. And then the next person, come. that's the visual that I have when, when we say she's for the streets. She don't belong to nobody. She's a, it's a free for all. When a man is done with her, whether that be a one night stand, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, whatever, he just throws her back into the bin where he got her. And uh, the next guy comes along and uh, it the cycle repeats itself. And she never, 
She never belongs anywhere. And thus she begins to belong to that bin. She begins to belong to the streets and the streets are ruthless. The streets don't care. The streets don't have a heart. The streets don't have any mercy. The streets are dangerous. The streets are this, it's just this place where you are that anything can happen to you, whether you watching your back or not. And where you might get somebody along the way that help you watch your back, but there's always a price to pay to get that. And this is what I mean by she'll do whatever she needs to do to belong, even if it's temporarily. She for the streets. And nowadays, I think it used to be, it used to, being for the streets used to be this really shameful thing. And women didn't want you saying that about them. And I still think to a certain degree, women don't want you saying that about them. Like black women don't want men to say, oh, she's for the streets. But I think that we, just like most of our dysfunction, we come to celebrate it and we come to wear it as a badge of honor and we come to, you know, make a, we, we make it hip, we make it fly, we make it cool, we make it, you know what I'm saying? We make it something to be desired or something that's not that bad or something that, hey, you know what I'm saying? All us for the streets, girl, you ain't got to be shamed. You know what I'm saying? If somebody tell you, you for the streets, yeah, tell them you is for the streets and you get money up in these streets too. You know, that kind of stuff. Like we'll make a, 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 a witty little comeback for it. We'll have a slick little saying about it or something like that, that takes the steam out of the shame that comes along with being labeled in certain ways. So back this this happened with single motherhood. When I was a teenager, it wasn't cool to be a single mother. I mean, there were single mothers, but it wasn't really cool, not really. And teen mothers was even less cool. You know, I was still a teenager during the time where you got sent down south if you got pregnant and then when you came back, your mama had a whole little kid, you had a whole new sibling, right? And then I watched it progress to this something that instead of being something that young girls were ashamed to do, ashamed to go home and tell your mama you got pregnant because that meant that you were out here, you were being for the streets at a time where being for the streets was not popular, right? That wasn't something that a, that a wholesome young teenage girl was doing. That was something for them thoughts and bust downs to be doing. They got caught up. You know what I'm saying? Being for the streets and getting pregnant and all that kind of stuff. You came from a home with any type of structure. You was not supposed to do that. You were not supposed to do that. And if you did get caught up and did it anyway, you were ashamed to have had that circumstance, right? But but I watched the evolution of teen motherhood and single motherhood go from this stigmatized thing that nobody wanted to have that label to it's a badge of honor. Fantasia made a song about it. There are anthems talking about single, you know, mothers and baby mama. And you know what I'm saying? We think it's cute to say it's a baby mama and all that kind of stuff and have these dysfunctional relationships where we look forward to being somebody's baby mama. We think that that gives us some type of privilege or it's some type of station that we should be shooting for as women and especially younger women think that this is something that, you know, yeah, I'm his baby mama and I say it with pride rather than understand the stigma and the shame of birthing a kid for a man that didn't think enough for you to make you his wife. To have a kid for a man that you argue with all the time. To have a kid for a man that you will use that kid as a pawn against that man whenever. Or whatever the situation may be. You try to pull rank on his other girlfriends. By, and if she never had his baby, you will pull rank on her. Like, well, I'm his baby mama. You know what I'm saying? As if that was a rank. You understand what I'm saying? So we, so we take things that... Our bad behavior, 
We take things that are dysfunctional. We take our bad habits. We take our bad cultural things and our foolishness and we make them points of pride and points of celebration and points of empathy and sympathy rather than recognize them as the as the dysfunction that they are as the foolishness that it is and and work to try to keep that to a minimum and not make that be the face of our culture where we we take the sting out of it because when we took the sting out of single motherhood the rate went up but then that wasn't a good thing because our children suffered that wasn't a good thing because not only were families being broken, they weren't even being formulated in the first place. So it's, so a lot of times it wasn't even like the man and the woman was living together, married or whatever first and then broke up. It never was like that in the first place. They, it was just a hookup anyway. And I had a baby and I don't even know this dude really, not really. I mean, I don't know nothing about what he really do. He don't know nothing about what I really do. And I'm just having kids out here in these streets. I'm for the streets. I don't belong to anybody. My children don't belong to anybody. We're uncovered. We unprotected. Nobody comes here to help me solve these problems that I have on my plate. Nobody comes to make sure that I got the provisions that I need and my children have the provisions that they need because we removed the stigma from, from the dysfunction, and then that made it okay for us to be dysfunctional. And now that we are okay with being dysfunctional, we still find ourselves in a mess and we trying to figure out why are we in this mess and why is it so horrible? Because it's dysfunctional. And black people, black women, we gotta, we have to understand that we do celebrate dysfunctions. We do make songs and anthems and movies and shows and videos and all kinds of stuff that that up the quote unquote uplift that to us. It has it had that has become the definition of empowerment. The definition of empowerment for black women has become let's remove the negative stigma from every dysfunction that we actually have so that we don't feel bad doing the dysfunction, even though we know we should feel bad about this, even though we know that the outcomes are bad. In reality, it's not just a feeling all the time. It's, the, it's that the reality of the situation that we're in is bad. It has not turned out well. And we like to live in the delusion that as long as I don't have to be made to feel bad about it, then I should be able to go forth in foolishness and blindness and, and I don't allow nobody to make me feel bad. This is why black women like to say stuff like you can only God can judge me and y'all can't judge me. That's where that comes from. Y'all can't judge me translates into stop trying to make me feel bad for my dumb decisions. Stop trying to make me feel bad for, for being stupid when I know full and well, these are the things that I shouldn't have been doing. Don't be trying to make me feel some type of consciousness about the, the decisions that I make and how I go about living my life and how I go about raising my kids and how I go about having chaos all around me. Don't be trying to make me feel bad about this stuff empower me make me feel good about it make tell me that i'm all right tell me that i'm doing good so that when i engage in this foolishness and when i engage in this dysfunctional behavior i don't have to have the weight of it on my conscience i can do it not feel no type of way and i can always have some woman somewhere some other black woman to help me with it by telling me sis you're okay. You doing a good job, sis. You doing a good job. Like that's what you want people to tell you. You doing a good job when you know you ain't doing no good job. You understand what I'm saying? So we're gonna have to ice that, knock it off. 
with being for the streets and trying to remove the stigma from that because I see that happening. We trying to celebrate that. Let please don't. Please let's save our young girls from that and thinking that being for the streets and being about that life and all that kind of stuff is something to be proud of. We don't need to lose another generation of girls. We really don't. So sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Uh, like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.